In this video, we're going to be painting this gorgeous cupcake using the wet on wet oil painting technique. Hi, I'm Marion Dutton. Now, if you'd like to paint along with me during this tutorial, I have provided a tracing for this particular image. It is quite a straightforward image, um, so you may be able to freehand it. But for those of you who feel more confident with a outline, I've provided an outline for you available on the Mazart Academy, and I'll leave a link to that in the description box below. So in celebration of my birthday, we'll be painting this cupcake tutorial. Remember, if you are enjoying these tutorials, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so and let me know in the comments below if you've enjoyed this lesson and you're planning to have a go for yourself. Okay so the first thing I want to mention is that I've actually toned the canvas with some Naples yellow. That's Naples yellow acrylic and then we're going to be working our oils over the top. So the light is going to be coming from this right hand side and the first thing I want to do is sort of preserve a little bit of the reflective light if you like, the warmer light, sort of the light that's going to be passing through. And I'm coming a little bit away from the reference photo, I'm sort of exaggerating some of these colours. I have a little bit of medium here but I use very very little and only if you need to. I tend to work quite dry if I possibly can. So if you feel your paint is, this cadmium red that I'm using is lovely and creamy so it really doesn't need a lot of medium. So I'm going to get this light area first, this is the light that's passing through and then I'll go into a little crimson and even add a little magenta as well. I want to create a little bit of a reflective light. I'm going to use some blue for that and a very small amount of white. I've still got some of that red on the brush so it's going a little bit more purple which is exactly what I want. I just want to hint at a little bit of a cooler tone over on that shadowed side. Next I want to begin adding some of the shadows on our icing. So I'm going to go into a little cab red and some alizarin. Just focus on where I'm seeing these um, creases, keeping it a little warm on the light side, the right hand side. Just a little drop of medium if you feel your paint is just sitting on the surface. And as I bring that shadow around I do want to pick up a little of that blue again, cool things down slightly to get the shadow tone. I'm applying the paint very very thinly. And I want to create some of the contour by just using my brush. I'm going to switch now to a soft blending brush and kind of wrap the shadow very lightly around that shape, around that contour. It is almost like a dry brush. Now before I start adding any thicker opaque paint I want to move on to the part of the, the sponge part of the cake and for that I'm going into some shadow with a little burnt umber and picking up some of that red. Just keep adjusting those colours I'm looking for a nice shadow and then like before it goes a little warmer so into a small amount of burnt sienna as we bring that shadow around the front. Picking up a little yellow ochre and burnt sienna and we're going a little warmer in this shadow so I'll pick up a small amount of the red, a little bit more of the burnt sienna 
I'm tapping the brush so I'm creating just a little of that texture into my small blender again. This is a smooshing brush from Rosemary and um, it's been used well used so you can see it's ended up with a little tip on the end and that's basically because I've used it for a lot of rubbing and I'll add some white to the yellow ochre starting in my lighter area to begin with And to bring some stronger highlights, remember we've got that lovely yellow. So I'm actually going to do just a little erasing using a Q-tip and just tapping that on. And that will bring back some of that lighter tone underneath. And then using some warm white, which has got some yellow in it, we can pop on some final highlights. This is a mixture of yellow ochre, cadmium yellow and white. I'm going to pick up a little cadmium orange. Working on the casing now, this is burnt sienna. Just using this with a little medium to block in. And as we come further round, I'm going to pick up a little ultramarine blue into that mixture just to darken it slightly. For the top part of the wrapper, I'm going to mix a grey using white and a very small amount of black just to tone that down slightly. You could use ultramarine blue and burnt umber as well. And add just a little of that burnt umber for a slightly warmer tone. So we've got a nice lightish grey colour and then into that I do want to add a small amount of that magenta to make it more of a pinky grey. Just a very small amount of medium. Focusing initially just on the blocking in. can always pick up a little bluish tone as you go around the shadow side. Now I've just wiped the brush and what I want to do now is just drag that colour down and allow it to blend with the colours underneath. You must wipe it in between so that you're not dragging that colour back up. And you want to follow the direction that the wrapper is facing. I've not got no paint on the brush, I'm just manipulating the paint that's already down. Back to our very clever wipeout tool now. I want to just erase a little of that paint So now we've established our shapes, I want to be able to add some shadows. I'm going to keep these quite warm, a little burnt umber with some of that magenta. Keep wiping between layers. Back to our lighter mixture, add just a little more white to that. Just warming that colour slightly and following the contour. Switching now to a liner brush and going a little bit lighter. And we can really start to pop on those details. Now 
Okay, before I begin on the icing, I want to address the background. And everything is lovely and pink, so we want something that's going to complement. So for that, I'm going to use a little bit of green. And we'll go straight into this puddle. Let's throw in a little blue as well. So starting with sort of a greenish blue colour, which is going to be used for the background. But I do want to adjust it slightly. So as the light is coming, around here is going to be warmer. So I'll take that blue and add a little yellow ochre, cadmium yellow to it just so it's slightly different tone, slightly warmer. And again, just a little medium where you need it. We can add a little more light to that as well. Now we do have a little bit of a shadow, so I'm gonna stay with these colors. We'll go with some more of the green, a little more of the blue. Just bring that shadow out a little, pick up a little more white into that mixture as we come out of that. So again, back to our slightly warmer colour. Go in a little cooler. And as we go a little further back, I want to grey things a little more. And we'll add a little burnt umber and a small amount of black to this colour. Tonally, everything's very, very similar, but we just want to grey that down slightly, picking up a little of that blue and magenta. And I haven't cleaned the brush, but I just want to use this to bring a little colour to the shadowed area, just on that outer edge. Bring a little of that purplish tone into the background for some variety and just creating a slightly stronger shadow right where the cake is touching the table. I like to keep everything soft so I'm just going to use a mop very very lightly to do a little blending. And I do want to bring just a little more light. So now we're going to add the frosting and those final highlights. I'm going into this Radiant Magenta. This is from Gamblin's Radiant Range. If you don't have this, you can always use Mixer Pink using some white and magenta or even white and alizarin crimson. Again, just the smallest amount of medium. I'm applying this in the center area because as we go round that way, we're gonna change the tone slightly. So staying with this color, but I'm gonna pick up just a little of this purple from before and just change the tone as we move around to this side. I don't want it to be too dramatic a change, just a little hint of a slightly cooler shade. I'm applying the paint quite thinly so that we're able to go over this later with some thicker highlights. Don't be worrying about bringing some of that background color and dragging it in. I'm going back to the radiant pink and adding more white. I'm 
Now we're going to go lighter still. I'm switching to a slightly softer brush and this will allow me to lay that paint on without disturbing the under colour. Again, cooling that colour with just a little bit of that purple tone, that blue tone, as we highlight the other side. So you have a warmer area and then a cooler area. I'm switching to white now and again I'm applying this very very thick as we come to these final highlights. Picking up a little magenta and some alizarin. Making sure I've got enough darks in. And I think we'll call that a finished painting. I really do hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Again, please do hit that like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't all already done so. It really does help the algorithm push the content out to other people. And of course, add your comments down below. Let me know if you've enjoyed the tutorial and you're planning to have a go yourself. Once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.